now we can, I, I think we can, uh, we can start. We can uh, uh, thank you very much to everybody for showing up in this uh, second uh, uh, webinar that we as uh, the World Association uh, of Bouillatric uh, have decided to organize in order to uh, enable us to know each other somehow, to know the experience of the different uh, uh, um, association working in, uh, in, in, the, in the different part of uh, the world. I think, uh, I know that perhaps we are not so many, but it is, it is enough people that are interested to know it, to, to, to meet with us. It is nice to, to meet not only during the Congress, our Congresses are, let's say, you can say unfortunately, but we cannot do differently, only every two years. And therefore there are some friends that we meet only every two years. And this is, I don't like, I don't like the, web, the webinar, but these are a, a unique occasion to just to get in touch and to meet and to see person from the other side of the world that we meet very, very rarely. Therefore, thank you for showing up. Before, before starting this afternoon meeting, or afternoon in Italy, so this meeting, I would like just to, to say, to express the, the sympathy and the solidarity with our colleagues in Turkey. Oh. Uh, because actually uh, this afternoon, this, so today, uh, the, the plan was uh, for them uh, to introduce the, the, vet, the, Beatrix, the Veterinary Association uh, in, uh, uh, from Turkey, but uh, due to this uh, terrible uh, earthquake, uh, we also, we understand uh, so the difficulties of many colleagues in, uh, in Turkey, therefore, uh, Professor Azam, Batmas and Idir and all the, I saw also other colleagues uh, uh, in, uh, from Turkey present in this uh, uh, webinar, uh, press, feel uh, our closeness. Uh, and so uh, let me underline the sense of belonging to the community of the, of the pediatrician all over the world. And you are part of, of this community. And also I would like just to, to express also the sympathy, our closeness to the people involved in uh, in the war the, in the war uh, uh, in Ukraine, but there are also many other conflicts all over the world. And so, what we can do as pediatricians? So perhaps we cannot do a lot in solving this uh, political conflict, this political uh, situation. I think that uh, what we can do is to do what we can do every day is to do. Uh, our work, uh, so to do our best in our in our work. This is perhaps the best way to contribute uh, for uh, improving uh, the situation uh, and to cooperate for peace or improving the situation all over the world. So this afternoon uh, we have uh, two associations that are going uh, to introduce uh, uh, themselves. So the first uh, is uh, a new entry. In, uh, in, the, in the family of the World, Asso World Association for Biatrics, that is the Medical Veterinary International from uh, uh, Tunisia. And uh, we will give uh, the microphone, the floor uh, uh, in one minute to Dr. Khaled El Isheri. And also the second part of the webinar will be uh, given, will be held, uh, will be concentrated uh, on the presentation of the European College for Bovine Health Management. That is a, a very, very interesting and ha uh, high level uh, institution for uh, the um, education of uh, young uh, biatrician. Therefore, and uh, the president, uh, Walter Grunberg, will uh, uh, show us, will present the, the college. So therefore now I, I would like to ask uh, Dr. Khaled Elisheri to take uh, the, the floor, to, mute, to unmute, to switch on uh, the microphone. Uh, Dr. Elisheri, thank you very much. Welcome uh, to our community. Uh, uh, and uh, we are very happy to hear your experience, to, to hear 
what is the context where you, where uh, the association work and uh, what is your kind uh, your type of activities thank you please thank you president thank you Arcangelo Gentile uh, I'm uh, happy to share with you this af this afternoon the uh, webinar on uh, the at our association which is uh, named Medical Veterinary International and present to you the uh, Beatrix from Tunisia. Medical Veterinary International, uh, it's a, a non-profit, non-governmental non association which does not recruit experts for the job, but facilitates their identification and mobilization for specific miss missions in Tunis or outside. This uh, network of skills bring together experts serving the health of livestock and uh, public health by the way. Uh, the governance of the MVI is uh, done by uh, a status approved by the constitutional, uh, the Constitutive General Assembly uh, in, on uh, February 11, 2014, which define the objectives mission and methods of governance of our association. We have also an international policy, which specifies the rules and operation inside the association and the technical committee. What motivated, motivated us, uh, our motivation uh, are related to the increase in trade and animals and animal products, the proliferation of health crises and episodes, the demand for services of veterinary skills and expertise, the need to strengthen veterinary capacities to better control those sanitary constraints, and uh, the, health, the public health recommendation from international organization helped us also the extension of the concepts of veterinary services to the whole services furnished by vets from the private uh, side sector as for, from the official sector. There is only one veterinary services as there is only one, one health. Our goal is to create a network of veterinary skills based on know-how and experience of expert uh, consultants or having uh, uh, worked on the field and in the international organization and on the private sector also. Promote national veterinary capabilities and offer service and support expertise. We, uh, we can see on the slides that uh, there is uh, many, many other uh, goals. Uh, that uh, allow us to the production, allow the production and processing sector, as well as the users, to benefit from the skills of the member of the network. First of all, I want to present to you Tunisia, a country uh, situated in the north, in, in the center of the middle of. Uh, uh, Mediterranean uh, Sea, close to uh, Italy, on the north, close 
to Algeria, Libya, on both sides, east and west, and the Sahara uh, Desert uh, on the south. The area is uh, nearly 162,000 kilometers square, square kilometers. Capital Tunis, population uh, approximately 12 million. The density is uh, 74 inhabitants uh, square uh, kilometers. And the rate of natural uh, increase is low. It's 1.1%. And the life expense expectancy is nearly 71, uh, 77 years. The literacy uh, rate is 81%. Uh, it, it dropped last uh, years. It dropped a little. And the religion is uh, Islam. So, Our interest you now is on agriculture. Mm -hmm. um, agricultural lands cover 10 million uh, hectares, and half, half of it are uh, arable land, cultivable land, and a uh, few thousand hectares, uh, 376 hectares uh, of irrigated uh, perimeters, which furnish more than 25% of the product of the agricultural production and 3 million rangelands for the pasture of the sheep and goats. But uh, these uh, rangelands are degraded and 1.2 million forests. Uh, our life, uh, our livestock and animal production represent an important component uh, of uh, the country's economy. It is a breeding dominates to the agricultural structures. It represents thirty nine percent of the uh, the activity, agricultural activity, contributes to uh, uh, the main. Uh, uh, the main uh, resource of income for 450,000 breeders. And the animal production represents 30% of gross uh, livestock product. And uh, the investment are not very high. It's around 12% on this sector. And the contribution of the livestock and animal production sector economy economic activity is nearly 4% of the GDP, the gross uh, domestic product. And uh, it contributes uh, to, to the exportation and the share of agricultural and food exports represent 11% in the country's trade balance. We have a huge number of farms because they are very small, uh, 471,000 units, and 87% uh, of uh, these uh, farms are small and medium size. But uh, the livestock is the main activity in 22% 20, of the farms. And uh, on the small farms, and uh, uh, the, only one percent of uh, the farms uh, superior to 100 hectares practice livestock farming. As you can see, uh, more than half of the farmers have a farm of less than five hectares. It's a small. A small area, small superficy. And anywhere we're trying to have farms between five to ten hectares. One and most livestock farmers are small, small holders. 
livestock is the most important part of agricultural production with uh, 769,000 bov bovine heads, 7 million sheep heads, 1.5 million goat heads, uh, heads and 70,000 uh, female uh, camel units. Uh, now the slide, see this slide about uh, dairy farming. Uh, dairy farming was seen from the outset as one of the drivers of agricultural int intensification. And uh, the, the government gave the priority of uh, milk production from pure bred dairy cattle. This production should bring in its wake the meat production consisting of curd cattle, males and heifers excluded from breeding or intended uh, for slaughter after fattening. And uh, it will be, it will increase the uh, number of uh, tons of uh, meat. The intensification, the intensification of fodder crops and the full employment in rural areas. The crop of herd in Tunisia is composed by a local type, which, uh, which is uh, closely related to the Brune de l'Atlas and the Blonde uh, du Carbon, who breeds uh, uh, very, very few numbers of them are still alive. The crossbreed, uh, descending from a mating between the local type and uh, exotic breeds, mainly European breeds, and the pure breeds, mainly represented by the Holstein and Frisian, which represent 85% of this, this uh, herd. The main action are carried out to genetically improve the existing livestock by artificial insemination, which covers only 53% of purebred and 11% of local. And uh, secondly, a milk recovering uh, recording program, which includes 13,000 cows, followed by zootechnicians. And for the purebreds, the program of genetic improvement is mainly based on uh, open uh, importing both highly performing animals and semen of tested bulls. The bovine herd is composed by 710,000 heads, including 454 female units. We count in female units uh, better than heads from time to know exactly uh, well, what uh, the importance of the flock. Uh, numbers of uh, purebred, uh, 364,000 heads, including two. Uh, 223, including Holstein, most of the, of the herd, which very few number, and Tarantes, very, very few number, and some Mambiliard and Flecky. The crossbred are, are uh, num still numerous, uh, 135. 34 heads, including 87 female units, and the local breads, the original breads, 212 heads, including 144 female units, including Atlas Brown and Cap Carbon Brown. That's the very title of uh, pure breads currently encountered in Tunisia are. Actually, the Frisian Holstein, uh, 
as uh, it has said, for 95% uh, of the pure bread flour. The brune des Alpes, the Tarentaise, the Pirouge. And since the beginning of the 20th century, many breads have been imported with chocolate, French chocolate and Italian chocolate, or crossbreeding with the local, including the, the Montbéliard, Brune des Alpes, etc. Uh, we imported also the Nellor, the Sahival, and the Red Sindhi from Pakistan and India. In the, in the 70s, a national absorption crossing program, program d'absorption, to improve the performance of local cattle herds was set up. Three birds have been selected for this program, the Frisian, and then uh, the Holstein, the Brown Alpine, and the Tarantes. The cattle herd increases by 111% due to the increase of the number of first bred cows and the import of 31,000 31, nearly uh, um, dairy breads, heifers from 1986 to 1989. You can see in this breakdown that the holy, uh, the bovine herd is uh, uh, located in uh, uh, the importance of bovine herds by bread. And the, the pure race represents a little more than 50%, the uh, crossbred 30%, and the local uh, bred nearly 20%. Uh, the repartition by uh, region, 72% uh, for the north, 25% in the center, and 3% in the uh, south. The local breads are very important for me and for Dr. Mesneni because it's uh, one of our, our objectives, how to improve these local breads, which has been abandoned. Uh, they constitute a mosaic of individuals whose uh, genetic heritage constitute a mixture of which uh, are drawn at the genes of our Brunes Alp and Blanc du Cabon in danger of extension. They were large in number before the introduction of pure breads from mainly from European countries. These cattle have played and still play an important social and economic role by contributing for a large part to cover to covering the nutritional needs of rural population in milk and meat. During the protectorate, the settlers abandoned these unproductive animals uh, and they were driven uh, back uh, to the areas where the poorest for their resources. Um, they were replaced uh, with two bread cattle, more, more demanding in food and care and more sensitive to climatic condition and disease. Yeah. Absorption cross bread was executed with the sole objective of definitively eradicating our indigenous breeds by transforming them into cattle identical to the so-called improver breeds. And actually, we are currently in the presence of a large bovine herd composed of individuals uh, resulting from multiple processes not detected, di directed, or scientifically controlled. So it's a very mixture. And th this cattle herd adopted to the arid cl climate and many other difficult breedings and feeding conditions 
is kept by a multitude of small farmers, sometimes without land or established in marginalized area. There, there would be certainly a lot more milk to market if there was a good basic infrastructure in the area where these local breads are located, roads or tracks, electricity, milk collection center or mini center in the area where these cattle are raised. Because 83% of consumption needs, which is 27 kilo per person. The total net meat production, all species combined, is 285,000 tons, including uh, for the poultry meat, 56% poultry meat, and 43% red meat, with uh, nearly 20% fish meat, 17% sheep meat, 3 and 3.3 uh, goat meat, 2.6 camel, equine, and other meats. Red meat represents 46% of the total meat consumption, equivalent to 12.5 kilos per person. Uh, imports represent 7% of red meat consumption and 95% uh, 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 of imports consist of beef. The relative share of each species at the national level is 48%, 45% of beef, 45 sheep, and nearly 6% of the meats. Mm. Uh, an important thing to know is that meat from the controlled slaughter circuit represents only 46% of bovine, ovine, and caprine meat produced and consumed. Concerning milk, most of the milk is produced by small farmers who own less than five cows. We have big farms, but most of the production comes from the, uh, uh, the small ones. The average level of production is still too low, despite the increase in the number of purebred cattle, dairy cattle. Uh, dairy production ensures 25% uh, of gross livestock product, 7% of the gross product of agricultural production, and cover 100% of consumption but nearly 30% of the milk produced is not collected by organized circuits. Milk collection, processing and consumption. Milk collection uh, is made by 240 collection centers and uh, with the capacity exceeding uh, 2.8 million liters of milk per day. The milk collected represents 33% of the milk produced, and the dairy center obtained 90% uh, of the fresh milk from this collect collection center. Milk processing and transformation includes 45 industrial units all over the country, with a processing capacity of 5.4 uh, million liters a day. A network of traditional processors spread through the country, but uh, they are not uh, calculated. There are no statistics. Uh, our production, in a, in a production of our institutions uh, in charge of uh, the animals, is a 400,000 bovine female units of all breads in production, including 235,000 pure bread bovine, bovine 305 local and cross bread bovine, uh, with an average milk production uh, for the per 
purebred 4,300 bits per year, which is low, and uh, milk uh, production for uh, local uh, and cross breed 71 liters a year. Uh, milk from purebred cattle will attain 1 million uh, uh, ton and the production of milk when the, uh, from the cross the rain will obtain 2,017 2, ton and the total milk production will attain 1,217,000 million the quantity uh, collected will be 750 millions and the quantity of milk sent to industry 710 million liters. These are the objectives. Uh, projection the quantity uh, delivered directly to the industry 1 million liters. Total quantity delivered to the industry 710 million liters. Uh, milk number of milk collection centers 345. Milk collection capacity 2 million liters. Refrigeration unit 311. Refrigeration capacity 500,000 liters. And net meat production by their bovine uh, million at 116 kilo. Net beef production, uh, 63,000 tons. Total beef consumption, 50,000 tons. The consequences of uh, the uh, policy followed uh, uh, four years now. The animal production level, more than 55% of meat needs are covered by white meat leading to greater and greater dependence on the international market. The coverage of milk and dairy product needs is ensured thanks to the continuous import of pregnant tafers. The cattle breeding program now exists only on the paper. The smuggling of dairy cows to neighboring countries is increasing. The slaughterhouse subgrading program is a failure. The clandestine slaughter has grown into anarchy and prosperity. Livestock peeling relies more on external resources than on national resources. The raw, mater raw materials for the manufacture of compound feed are massively imported, and forest production and advanced land improvement, improvement program have swallowed up considerable sums without result. That's a very bad situation. To overcome these contracts, further resources uh, cover only 30, uh, 35 to 50% of needs, depending on the year and on the rainfall. Transplants represent 20 to 30% of these resources cultivated for uh, fodder. 15 to 20 persons. The further deficit is compensated by compound feed imported. Natural landscapes has been reduced in a few decades from 8 million hectares to 3 million hectares, replaced by arboriculture and trees. Uh, uh, plantation of fruit trees, olive trees. Pastoral improvement action were only able to achieve 11% of the objectives. It's very, very few. The high grown fodders, which occupied nearly 400,000 hectares in 1996, failed to exceed 300,000 by now. Further grown in the irrigation by less than 50% of irrigated perimeters, very low. There is still no real production of the beef, which remains to this day a byproduct of dairy farming and the product of extensive cattle farming. Artificial insemination only affects a small proportion of farms. 
and 30 to 30% 30 of red meat production does not pass through controlled shelter houses. So we have to do actions to remedy this situation, intensify the planting of other shrubs, amend the investment code to include the preservation of products at the farm, the farm and transport of milk without breaking the cold chain. Establish an effective quality control system from farm to consumer. Improve and increase the density of collection circuits. Establish a technical hygiene and sanitary control of the collection center on the model of the HACCP approach and submit them to regular audits. Develop a master plan for the organization organization of slaughter, uh, apply the legislation of slaughtering and transportation meat, promulgate texts regulating the veterinary health uh, stand for the, uh, for the uh, uh, slaughtered uh, meat, uh, uh, hygiene condition and slaughterhouses, transport vehicles and butchers, categorize carcasses and cut pieces, Promulgate measures to encourage the creation of specialized meat transport companies and create creation of meat cutting and processing workshop. Thank you very much. Je voudrais, uh, Arcangelo, je voudrais ajouter uh, quelques remarques après la présentation du docteur Hishri. Je suis Mohamed Mathani. J'ai assisté au congrès de buaterie à Madrid et je suis ravi d'avoir euh, connu beaucoup de collègues et de confrères et surtout euh, la promotion à président de l'Association mondiale, euh, professeur Archangelo Gentile. Et notre, euh, notre association maintenant va se pencher surtout sur la qualité sanitaire des aliments, c'est-à-dire des aliments destinés aux animaux. Et deuxièmement, c'est la qualité sanitaire des produits, lait et viande. Et euh, en, en, sur la base de la euh, promotion des races génétiques locales dans le cadre de la biodiversité et du développement durable. C'est notre euh, maintenant euh, objectif, nos objectifs à suivre parce qu'on produit du lait et de la viande à peu près pour, faire le, pour le, notre besoin, mais il faut passer à la qualité. Et je sais très bien qu'en Italie ou bien en France ou bien dans d'autres pays, ils ont mis beaucoup de temps, une vingtaine d'années, pour arriver à la qualité. Nous, on voudrait faire moitié dans dix ans, j'espère avec Buatri, avec le docteur, professeur Arcangelo Gentile et tous les collègues de, de tous les autres pays que nous écoute, on peut créer des projets de promotion de cette de, de, de bovins de race locale en, en Tunisie. Merci beaucoup. Thank, thank you, Mohamed. I understood almost everything, but I am perhaps not able to, to, to translate. I don't know whether Emile or Raphael that I think they are present would like to summarize what you mentioned. Anyway, uh, I uh, would like to, to thank you, uh, Mohamed, and also uh, Dr. Elishiri. So you presented uh, in a very, very valuable way, so very valuable figures. This is uh, also the, the, the aim of these uh, uh, webinars, uh, that is uh, to illustrate the situation of the countries, to let us understand what are the problems. You mentioned it a lot. We don't have time. Eventually, we can postpone the discussion after the second part, uh, after the presentation of the college, because you uh, you evidence so many so many issues, so many aspects. Just to mention uh, some of them: uh, the the replacement, the import of poor bred cattle uh, that are more demanding in food and care, but more sensitive to climatic condition. The the performances of the crossbred, uh, crossbred cattle that due to the condition cannot be, cannot complete or cannot uh, um, satisfy the expectation. So, so many, so many aspects that are really worth of being discussed. 
uh, I, I would say, I would say now, Peter, if you agree, I would move to the presentation of, uh, of the European College. And then when we are back, we can open the discussion uh, so that also if somebody, uh, you need a summary sentence to translate. Yes, uh, Emile, eventually then uh, Mohamed, in the discussion you can, uh, you can uh, repeat uh, shortly uh, in, in French that Emile can translate or in Italian that I can translate. But I would postpone it to the second part, but really thank you, uh, Dr. Lichery. So valuable figures that you presented. This is really the reason and, uh, of these webinars, to, to let us enter the problem of the different, different countries. And also uh, Tunisia is uh, in, uh, in the Mediterranean uh, area, and we can consider also some, some, uh, somebody consider all the Mediterranean uh, countries uh, all uh, country, but we, uh, there are so many differences that are really worth of being discussed and considered. Anyway, now I would uh, invite uh, uh, Professor Walter Grunberg, president of the European College for Wine Health Management, to, to show us, to, to introduce and present the, the college. And then at the end, we do a, dis a general discussion. Walter, please, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Arcangelo. Um, thank you, everybody, for being here this afternoon and um, evidently to the um, World Association of Pediatrics uh, for having us this afternoon to give us the opportunity to present you a feature about the European College of Bovine Health and uh, Management. Uh, let me start um, with um, giving you, alone if this seems to work here, yeah, with giving you a brief mission statement. So um, what the European College of Bowman Health Management is, it's actually a veterinary specialty college accredited by the European Board of Veterinary Specialization, which is the umbrella association that accredits and certifies all these specialty colleges. And um, it has its main purpose, main um, dedicated objective to advance knowledge and expertise in all aspects covering bovine health management. You can think of um, based on scientific evidence. And what the college is primarily doing, it's um, evidently training the future specialists in bovine medicine, so our residents. So these, these we consider these our, our bone marrow. This is essentially what will keep the 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 college and, and the, the industry um, alive in, in the next generation and thereafter. Uh, so we are essentially accrediting training institution where this training can, can take place. We provide training, we prove support to training of these residents. And then later on, we certify these specialists passing exams, and then we recertify our current members in a regular intervals of five years. Uh, and further to this, the CBHN essentially considers itself as a pool of expertise. It wants to serve as a source of expertise in all areas related to bovine health management for public, for the authorities, for NGOs, and so on, to make this knowledge broadly available. So what, what this means essentially is that um, if, we, if we look at what the college actually is, it's, it's, a, it's a bunch of bovine specialized veterinarians that are expert in their specific subfield of bovine medicine, which is a really broad church. I mean, we have experts in reproduction, in um, metabolic disease, in individual animal search, um, in, in economics, um, you name it. Uh, and certainly not everybody knows everything about cattle, but what we um, pride ourselves is that within our community, we would have an expert for pretty much every area, every subfield you could think of. So if you would approach us, we would be able to identify the person that is most suitable um, for the question you have so that essentially we can facilitate um, the accessibility of um, expert knowledge in the area of bovine health medicine. Yeah. So, um, 
being a pool of expertise in this area is one thing. The other thing is essentially our dedication to try to advance knowledge in our field, in bovine medicine. So we're doing this, for instance, by um, sponsoring um, bioethics congresses, where we, for instance, uh, we host um, keynote speakers, we organize uh, workshops for the attendees and so on. And as I mentioned before, training of our residents. This is probably the core business of what we are what we are doing. Yeah? So here I'm giving you a couple of examples we're doing again on top of veterinary specialist education, which is the residency training, but it's not just residency training, it's also promoting um, the expert level also for interested specialist veterinarians in, in their field that do not um, have um, chance to undergo the, the special training, but we try to support them, um, as I said, by supporting um, bioethics conferences, by, by giving them the opportunity to attend um, workshops and so on. We function as um, consultation um, service for authorities, for instance, for the European Medicines Agency or for the European Food Safety Authority, which um, basically contact us whenever they need expert opinion in the area of, of cattle health. Huh? But we're also doing that for NGOs, like, for instance, the Federal uh, Federation of Veterinarians of Europe. Yeah. We contribute and participate in developing consensus statements in various areas, um, addressing um, cattle health and position papers as well. And we're lobbying. We're lobbying for everything related to cattle health, cattle well-being, productivity, not only within Europe, but basically across the world. Yeah. Um, let me go it back in time and well this might be um boring for you but actually it's i find this uh, the history of the college quite quite fascinating it's uh, it goes back 25 years and it started probably um at the world pediatrics in 1998 in in sydney in australia where um the late wolfgang klee and uh, professor walter baumgarten tossed around the idea of founding a college that is internationally recognized and would not be based on specialty, like let's say internal medicine or surgery or reproduction, but rather that would be species-based. This is something that was pretty much unheard of, at least at the international level at that time. Yeah? And it was in the same year um, later on that um, they basically um, constituted what they called the Provisional Organizing Committee. You can see the names here. These were all seasoned academics um, of the time that basically from there on consistently pushed the idea and developed this idea forward. So you can see it took a while, five years until the next step during which these people tried to plant the seed of this specious um, based college because this was not an easy way to go simply because um, the, the concept of not having a specialty based college did not fall well with EBVS at that time. They thought, well, if you need specialization, you need to do that on a specialty, on a discipline. You can't do it on a species because that would be too broad. Yeah? Um, but in 2003, they succeeded. So they received a provisional recognition of um, the European College of Bovine Health Management by um, the Umbrella Association, the EBVS. Yeah. And then it took another, um, yeah, almost seven years until we ended up with the full recognition. Yeah. So um, ECBHM was essentially the first really species-oriented or species-based college. In the meantime, we have several more. We have the Porcine College, we have the College for Small Ruminants, we have the Laboratory Animal College, but ECBHM was essentially the one that basically um, smoothed the path to that, to that direction. Also, you will see 2003, first time that the college was officially recognized. Now we have 2023. So we are 20 years further, and this is essentially a jubilee year um, where we will celebrate our 20th um, anniversary as um, recognized college. Yeah. 
Here I give you a brief um, overview about how the college is structured. So you can see that there is on one hand the board. The board consists of seven individuals, um, the presidents, two ordinary members, the secretary and um, the treasurer that are essentially um, coordinating all the activities. Um, the college is actually organizing this handling. Um, the bulk of the work, although is done in the different committees we have. So for instance, we have the credentials committee Committee, the education residency committee, an exam committee. Um, and there, every committee consists of a chair and between six and nine individuals that basically run this business. This is really the bulk of the work that is done. Uh, and then on, top, on the bottom, you see there is an administrative secretary. Uh, so this is essentially somebody who takes care of uh, running the daily business. And that is essentially the only person in the college that earns money from the college with the, with the service it's doing. Everybody else is working out of dedication for um, the college for the purpose. Uh, um, there is plenty of activity. This is quite a vibrant um, college. Um, everybody's very enthusiastic about um, what it does. So we have, for instance, yearly convention. Um, usually it's a congress, um, an international congress that takes place somewhere in Europe that um, invited the college um, to host its annual general meeting. Uh, and in exchange for that, the college essentially contributes to, for instance, um, hiring a keynote speaker. So they sponsor the keynote speaker. They organize uh, workshops for the attendees and so on. You, we usually also organize um, a workshop for our residents somewhere around this, this meeting. Yeah. Um, we also have regular webinars for our residents. So every two weeks um, we gather, we have residents, but also diplomats that get together and discuss subjects that are relevant for the training for our residents. And this is a good fresh up for our, for our diplomats as well. Yeah. And last but not least, every year we have to conduct the certifying board exams where the residents at the completion of the residency will essentially um, hopefully get um, the approval and the recognition as a board certified specialist in bovine health management. Yeah? So you see there's a lot of activity going on every year. Um, there was a bit of a breakdown during the COVID-19 years, but we're lucky that since last year we had um, um, the big meeting in, in, in Madrid and um, this year um, in late summer, we will um, meet again at our Jubilee meeting in um, Berlin. I will tell you about that in a minute. Yeah. Now a brief um, overview of the demogra uh, demographics. So what you see here is uh, the distribution of our diplomats. So in total, we have 243 diplomats um, in our college. So we are one of the larger colleges um, accredited by EBVS So these 243. 173 are practicing or active diplomats uh, that really have an active um, accreditation. Yeah? Um, 19 are non-practicing and 52 of them are retired. And you can see that distributes over um, a good room area um, over, over Europe, we are currently making a lot of effort to basically expand um, a bit more into the um, middle European region or also into the Scandinavian region. So uh, we're making progress there. No? But you can see that um, there is a quite um, good distribution over Europe. We also have some members in um, the US, for instance, in Canada. As far as residents are concerned, um, in total, we have um, 71 residents. So these are people that either are currently under training or completed the training and are preparing uh, for their exam. Yeah? Um, they come or they basically work in 17 different countries, including uh, we have uh, trainings currently running in Canada as well. Yeah? And uh, we offer two different forms of residency training programs, what we call either the standard residency program, which is the majority. I will tell you a little bit more about these differences in a minute. And we have nine alternative residents in that, uh, in that uh, group. Yeah. Um, so talking about the residency training, which I said is probably the core of our duties, at least this is how we understand it. Um, I um, show you here our policies and procedures. This is a 
um, document, um, 70, uh, 70 pages in volume. Um, if you're interested, please um, check it out for more detail. Um, it's available um, freely at, on our website. Yeah. But basically, um, if somebody wants to um, go start a um, residency program, essentially there is one major prerequisite. It's uh, you have to be graduated as a veterinarian and you have to be eligible to work as a veterinarian in a European country or the UK. Yeah. Um, after um, having graduated, you need um, you must have completed a what we call an internship, which is having worked in practice um, for at least one year if it's a pure bovine practice or for at least two years if it's a mixed animal practice where you have um, one focus on bovine medicine. Uh, and with these prerequisites, you would be able to apply for a residency program and the training um, takes between three and six years, depending on the intensity of the work you have, the exposure um, you have, because you have to basically comply with a curriculum where you have to have a certain number of cases in different areas. So that may um, take a bit more time in, in one training um, site than another. Yeah. And then, as I mentioned before, we have two different programs, which is the standard residency program and the alternative residency program. The standard resi pro residency program, SRP, is typically taking place in an accredited training center of the CBHM, which in most cases are um, university clinics. Um, there are a few um, private practices that have been accredited, but most of them, are, as I said, are university um, teaching hospitals um, that are offering the standard residency programs. Um, this is evidently would mean that there would be a relatively restricted access to these training, which is why um, 10 years ago, we created the opportunity um, to complete what we call an alternative residency program. Yeah? And this means that um, you have the opportunity to undergo the training under a, uh, let's say, remote guidance and supervision by a diplomat yeah? um, that you would um, complete in a, um, an, in a training institution that could be a clinic, that could be a private practice that is not officially recognized as training center, but for the purpose of this program, um, there would be a developed training program under the guiding of a diplomat. You would have to add some um, um, externships at the official training site to complete this. Um, and this is something that is um, receiving increased um, interest among our diplomats, as you will, you will just saw that we had approximately um, yeah, almost 10% um, of our residents that are currently in the in the in this alternative residency program. And once you completed this training, evidently what you have to go through is the board exam. This is a very demanding, challenging um, um, exam. Yeah? But once you got um, you passed this exam, you received the title as board certified specialist, and with this you would essentially um, be um, able to um, hold this, this, this credential and you would have to recertify um, every five years. Yeah. Here you see a distribution of the training centers that are currently accredited, so 31 in total, um, most of them in Europe, we have one in Canada, one in the United States, we have one in New Zealand as well. Yeah. So it's not necessarily restricted to, um, to Europe, but the focus is here and we are essentially making an effort, as I mentioned before, to expand the least into the, to the middle European countries. Yeah. Um, the residency training, as I mentioned, this is important to us, and this is something that keeps many of us really busy. So what we're doing to support our residents, evidently there is the accreditation of the training centers, that's one thing. Every resident that is in a program gets evaluated um, every year, so he uh, submits a progress report, uh, he gets feedback from the um, education residency committee, supporting him, advising him on, on, on which areas need to be covered, uh, um, for the remainder of the residency and basically helping also, for instance, choosing for externships. 
Yeah. Um, the residents also have to um, generate case reports during their residency on individual animal and on herd health. And we are essentially providing them feedback and support as well. Yeah. Um, we organize resident workshops for our residents. So these are really hand-on experience um, we're doing. This is free of charge for the, for the residents enrolled into a program. Uh, I mentioned our bi-weekly online seminars that we also have in our um, closed YouTube channel you know, that covers, um, yeah, in the meantime, several hundred hours of, of really high quality information about um, many relevant areas in um, cattle health. Yeah. Evidently, we have to do the exam. So this is a bit the dark side of the college. Nobody is uh, happy about doing the exam, but once you're over it, um, you're really glad that you, you can you can pride yourself of having passed this this challenging this challenging experience. Yeah. Um, and we support them by planning extension and we, for instance, give them awards for um, presenting at conferences and meetings. So this was a brief run through on um, what the CBHM does, what it offers. If um, I um, challenged your curiosity, um, feel free to check us out on our website on ecbhm.org. Um, if you need more information also, I would be glad to um, receive emails from you. Either you see my personal email address or you just send it to our administrative office that will be able to direct this to the best contact person. Yeah. You may check us out on, on LinkedIn, on our um, LinkedIn group, um, ECBHM, Town Active Veterinarians. And um, with that, I'm at the end of my presentation and I would be happy to take your, to take your questions. Before I finish though, I would like to um, invite you to our upcoming um, conference, which is the European Pediatrics Congress um, 2023, that will take place in August in Berlin, Germany, uh, um, from the 24th of the 26th. Uh, that um, the program is already online, so feel free to check that out. Registration is online. Uh, and we would be pleased to meet you all there. So here you see this is a photograph uh, was taken in uh, Madrid at the last um, AGM we had there. This is the what we call the extended group board. So the board members and the chairs of the committees. Yeah. So a group of dedicated people, but you can see they all have fun with what they're doing. Yeah. So I, with this, I close my presentation. I would be happy to answer your questions. Thank you, thank you, Walter. Very interesting as usual uh, and very informative. Uh, of course, I'll say regional limited uh, to Europe, UK, or as uh, Walter has mentioned, uh, people that allowed that have the recognition uh, in Europe. Anyway, the college has uh, residents and diplomats all over the world, also in New Zealand, uh, in uh, in Canada, in the States, therefore, I mean, if somebody is interested, they could be fine. It's a very, very high level uh, educational training uh, for the resident. I'd say in Europe, for sure, the highest level of, uh, uh, of uh, education in, uh, in uh, bovine medicine. So I would like now, Peter, if allow me to open uh, the Discussion. In the meantime, I would share if I manage um, this. Uh, that is, if I'm able to do it, some information. Uh, yes, so just before people eventually will start to leave due to other commitment or other business uh, i would like to announce uh, the next webinar the next webinar uh, will be on uh, march 8 so practically uh, next week and uh, it will be a unique occasion because we have the honor of uh, having as guest uh, professor romano barabelli marabelli that is the advisor to the director general of the world organization for animal health the former oie and uh, is practically the number two of the OIE. And it will, uh, uh, it will uh, talk, it will give us uh, uh, 
some update on the approach and strategies of the World Organization for Animal Health in respect to bovine medicine and uh, uh, production. And therefore, save the date. If somebody has time, I think uh, it will be a very good occasion to be of uh, paramount interest. And then uh, I also post uh, again uh, the information, the date of, uh, of the Congress in, uh, in uh, Madrid. I don't see Peter. Do you see? The, the, did I manage to, to share the, the slide with the Congress and the title of the, of the webinar? Okay. Yes, it's, yes. it's okay. fine. <laughs> now, now I would like to open the discussion and uh, both to, uh, to our friend from Tunisia and uh, to, Walt, to Walter. I, I, I don't, uh, th there was also a question on the chat, but uh, uh, Peter, if you like to read the, the question, because I, I, I got lost in the two uh, screens that I have in front of me, <laughs> I don't find any more the chat. No problem. There was a, when, uh, there was a question from uh, Tom Yavinsky for, yes. uh, to the friends from yes. Tunisia. And, he, he was interested in uh, what are the biggest oh, issues yes. in the animals in that area. Is it parasites or bacteria or whatever? The question is to the Dr. Elisheri. Yes. Oh, unless, unless you edit. Huh? Oh, oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. There are some other microphones. Can, can you repeat the question, please? Yes, uh, the, the, question, the question was, uh, what are the biggest health issues in your area? Are it parasites or are it bacteria? What do you think? We have... Bacterial, bacterial disease, viral disease, infectious diseases, and uh, we have a lot of infectious uh, and uh, infectious disease. We started a program to eradicate tuberculosis, bo bovine tuberculosis and bovine uh, brucellosis. But uh, unfortunately, uh, we hadn't the founding uh, such, such a program as a duration of 10 years uh, at least. But we haven't, uh, we, we worked uh, three years on that, uh, on that uh, uh, program. And then uh, uh, the government said that there is no budget, budget to, to, to pay the the slaughtered animals. Uh, and, uh, that's, uh, that's the problem. We have good uh, programs, uh, well studied, but uh, we obtain it from time to time, counter counterparts found from uh, European Union or from uh, uh, bilateral uh, uh, country, uh, bilateral aid from other country, uh, Germany, France, or Italia, uh, yeah, because we are uh, close to Europe and uh, if everything happened in, the, in our country, it's, uh, we, we can project that uh, in few days or weeks, it will be in Europe. Uh, it's like the immigration, <laughs> they, they don't have, uh, uh, Boats, but <laughs> it goes with the persons. Uh, there is this uh, the problems with the uh, borders, the trans trans uh, transport disease. Mm. That's why uh, MVE and our our association try to cooperate and uh, to have to establish programs with the bilateral interests and founding interest. And diseases, uh, diseases uh, which are uh, spreading uh, 
in Tunisia coming from Middle East or Africa and ready to, to jump to Europe, we can establish uh, such a type of program just to stop. And uh, we think uh, that through uh, the uh, web organization, uh, we, we may found uh, some uh, veterinary organization in, of other countries uh, who are interested in such type of cooperation. Okay. Thank you, Alishiri. I don't know, don't know whether there are some other questions. So the position of Tunis, of Tunisia, is uh, strategic. I mean, also for the, the transport, for the trade of animals uh, around uh, the Mediterranean, the Mediterranean Sea. Mm -hmm. There is, a, there is a, a question that I would have, uh, would like to 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 ask. Uh, yeah. That uh, I know that. Uh, there is, and you mentioned it, the problem of the smuggling of livestock, of the moving mm -hmm. of the transportation or illegal transport of, uh, of cattle from Tunisia mm -hmm. to, especially, especially to Algeria. Algeria, yes. yes, yes. Yeah. Can, you, can you explain better the reason? By, because, uh, I mean, uh, this is something, something uh, strange for us to be, to be understood uh -huh. why animals move from Tunisia to Algeria in an illegal way. Oh, it's a, it's a question of, uh, it's an economic question. You know, the, uh, the, the government subsidizes some of the feed and uh, the, uh, the, the feed is uh, mostly important from the international market. And uh, from time to time, there is a variation. Uh, the, the, the prices of uh, feed on the international market jump and uh, increase. And so uh, there is no more benefit to, uh, to raise uh, cows and uh, to sell milk. And they, they prefer to uh, uh, to send them to the market to be slaughtered or to uh, send them to uh, the country. Uh, there is a need in Algeria of uh, 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 Frisian uh, cows and uh, our Stein cows. Okay. And Tunis is a, a furnisher. But for uh, economic reason. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. But this, this has also consequences uh, on the control of diseases, because uh, if you... If yeah, yeah, we, we, are, we are exchanging diseases. <laughs> there yeah. is a, it's a, an epidemiological uh, problem. Uh, diseases are jumping uh, through the, through the, the borders. And, but most of the, uh, the disease coming from uh, Africa or Middle East comes fr from Libya or Algeria. We, ha we hadn't some uh, diseases like uh, uh, West Nile disease or, uh, or uh, Peste de Petit Réminon, PPR. Yeah. We hadn't yeah. that. And now we, are, we have them. And to, to your to your to your knowledge, the how is the control? I suppose it should be very difficult in Libya to control disease, to control movement of animals, uh, and perhaps also in Algeria. So this is a this is a continuous risk for uh, for uh, the transmission of disease. Uh, uh, also, I would say also to Europe. I don't know. So what yeah. is your opinion? <clears throat> Yeah, the, the control, we, have, we, we are controlling on, on borders, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, they, they know where to pass. Uh, there is no uh, border guard uh, every uh, 10 meters. Yeah. Mm. It passed on the zone in the mm -hmm. control. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's very, 
very challenging. This is something that is very interesting also under a ge geopolitical point of view. So this is also the demonstration that sometimes, uh, uh, so bovine medicine, medicine is strictly correlated to the economical problem, to the polit political problem, to social, uh, to social problem. And for, <laughs> sure, and for sure, what are the, sure. the speculation uh, on, uh, on the commodities? Can uh, it does influence a lot uh, this kind of uh, of uh, consequences of, of movement of also animal movement because if animals are not uh, economically uh, are not economical uh, to to be re uh, bred or to be reared in in Tunisia we can understand that uh, people prefer to to smuggle to to Algeria. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Are there, are there other questions on, uh, also on, uh, on the college? Otherwise, I have a, a question on the college. Uh, Walter, you know, so we, we always, we have had uh, always discussed on the possibility of involving middle European uh, countries uh, in, uh, in the resident, in the residency and uh, so in our college. Uh, can you, I know that the college is very attentive in this. Can you eventually uh, say something on uh, what do, does the college do in order to, to enlarge the, so and to, to facilitate the residencies or uh, residency of uh, uh, people uh, willing of uh, uh, starting uh, a residency from the mid European countries. So um, th th this is indeed a uh, an endeavor uh, we embarked on. I would say five six years ago, we did a lot of effort. A single big part of it is basically creating awareness of the opportunity that there is um, that there is this college that you can do training, and most of all that we have offered what we call this alternative residency training program. Yeah? And this essentially means, yes, well, you would have to um, undergo through basic training at your, in your country, in your region, but we would facilitate, um, we would facilitate essentially um, the training by supporting the externships, by organizing, um, uh, by organizing stays, let's say in, in, well, in France, in Germany, or whatever, um, to complete the program because it's not that they they cannot do anything but they, they basically have some limitations in some areas and we try to identify these limitations and customize programs that are suited to the specific residents i can tell you for instance we have currently a very enthusiastic residence from, from romania yeah? um that is uh, doing this in a joint uh, venture cooperation with the university in ghent yeah. So um, there is a mentor, a supervisor in Ghent. They have regular contacts. Um, there is regular visits. There is also planned externships. Yeah. But the important thing is to identify the people, the young people that are willing to go through this path, because very clearly it's not easy. And very clearly the college cannot, because we are uh, EBVS um, audited. So we cannot just simply lower the bar, let's say, for some countries and say, for those, we make the exam easier. The, what we have to do is to make the training more accessible. And there um, it's a bilateral effort. So the, the brunt of the effort has to be taken by the resident. So he will have to know um, he will not get the diploma for free. Yeah? But on the other hand, um, he can be assured that if the college can do whatever it is to support this, to facilitate it, it will be done, right? Um, at the moment, we have a couple of um, promising um, residents that are going the path and hopefully they will function as a role model. Yeah? But um, clearly, I mean, doing a residency, a residency in these uh, middle European countries is certainly more challenging, more de demanding than doing that, for instance, in in, in Germany, in Switzerland, or in France. So we are learning from this. We're trying to improve this. Um, and the effort for the college is there, but um, there is still quite a way to go. Okay. Thank you. And uh, I, have an, I don't know whether there are other questions uh, from the participants. Please, I don't want to... 
it's to be the only one. I, I want I want to ask uh, yes, uh, yes for the the college, and mm -hmm. uh, I see that we have uh, some some goals uh, uh, which uh, catch together, and we may may we may cooperate and. And I we want to discuss uh, more on that. I feel I, I, I can mean, take. Uh, uh, so the college has said one one. Yeah. Is there a possibility of cooperation between uh, your organization and and uh, our association? Well, the, the thing is, we would have to define objectives. So clearly, uh, as I said, one big uh, objective of ours is to um, is to network. So basically, yeah. to identify where there is common interest. I mean, the, I mean, the common interest is mobile medicine. Uh, so um, and I'm 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 absolutely convinced that there should be yeah. um, plenty of mutual interest. Uh, the mm -hmm. first thing is essentially to um, to go through um, ideas, to toss around um, thoughts and identify first small um, reachable accessible objectives that can be that can be um, achieved through a corporation and mm -hmm. go from there but most yeah. certainly the college is open i mean we are the european college but that doesn't mean that uh, we will not we will not look beyond the fence and uh, we we need to know what's what's going on not just within europe but also within the world specifically africa which is which is um close to um, Asia, um, the Middle East, all these countries are not out of the world. So they are still part yeah. of our reality and um, exchange is, is critical, not just for the residents, also for our fellow diplomats. So yes, absolutely. Um, cooperation, the first thing is to get in touch, get contact um, and see um, where we can, where we can find um, the first accessible objectives for a, for a cooperation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I will take contact with you in a few days. Yeah, perfect. Okay. We're looking forward to it. Yeah. This is also, I'm happy for that because also the, the goals of these webinars, as I mentioned it from the beginning, is to, to, to facilitate the connection of a local association, in this case, European Association, Tunisian Association, or wherever in the world, to start form of co collaboration wherever they find uh, some uh, uh, um, some possibilities or some uh, common interest. Uh, therefore, uh, thank, thank you both Walter and Dr. Elisheri for this possibility. So I'm very happy for that. And in respect to Africa, everybody, I, I found in the chat from Francesco, do you think that we will have a WBC in Africa soon? I think everybody knows uh, my uh, my love for for African uh, uh, continent and uh, so this, this is my dream my dream to have a World Biatri Congress uh, in Africa. I'm, I'm unfortunate I will not be able as a president uh, to 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 have a congress because uh, uh, the presidency lasts only four years and we have already uh, organized uh, decided the congress for the next four years. But uh, I'm, I would be I would be very happy for that. And this is also the reason why I try to, to involve more African countries as well as also Asian countries. Uh, so we have to to really to open our World Boy Africa Association to the world to the world. Yeah. Therefore. This is also another reason of this uh, of this uh, uh, webinar. I don't know whether there are other questions. Otherwise, uh, uh, I would say, Peter, I would say uh, one and a half hour of our meeting, uh, I think is enough. I have a, a lot of question. I would have a lot of question for Tunisia, but I hope to be able to meet uh, the Tunisian con uh, colleagues very very soon uh, i'm happy for so um uh, if you, you if you would like uh, we are going uh, would like to to post uh, the presentation in the internet and therefore uh, uh, in the next day uh, peter will ask you to 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 allow us to put the presentation in 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 our web page or something linked to, to our web page the figures that you presented, Elisheri, are really 
so valuable, so interesting that uh, I, we as a World Bariatric Association should take care of, of that. So yeah. Peter, I don't know whether there are other questions, other issues that we yeah. have to do now. Uh, merci beaucoup, Arcangelo. Yeah, and I uh, as mentioned it. Mohamed Mettani. Yeah. Et, et je voudrais vous remercier yeah. beaucoup et surtout on voudrait une collaboration plus efficace entre l'Italie et les autres pays pour créer le projet de biodiversité et de développement durable des races bovines locales. Et pour cette occasion, vu que l'on est ensemble, on vous invite avec le les autres possibilités de, de collaboration avec le centre de formation européen. Si on peut déjà programmer une visite prochainement en Tunisie, vous êtes les bienvenus. Ok, ok. Thank you, Mohamed. So, Mohamed mentioned that it's open for collaboration with Italy, especially in respect to, uh, to, bio, to biodiversity for the local breed. And, uh, yeah. Uh, we are uh, welcome to Tunis, to Tunisia. Uh, Peter, I think we can, uh, I, I, uh, we can close. I only, I uh, only would like to, to, rem to remind you and to remember the next uh, webinar, March 8th, but we will, uh, we will send you again an, uh, uh, an email. I hope uh, we, we don't want to, because we know that there is an overload of uh, emails, but uh, so we, we allow us to send, we will allow us to send you again an email uh, for reminding uh, uh, the, the webinar with uh, Professor Marabelli of the World Organization for Animal Health. Therefore, thank you to everybody. Uh, thank you very happy, much. Happy having thank met you. you. Thank you, thank uh, you. Walter. Thank you, Professor Elisheri. I think uh, I said everything. Bye bye to everybody. Arrivederci, grazie. Ciao a tutti. Ciao, ciao, ciao. ciao. Bye, bye. bye bye. Bye bye. Siem, brava. Bravo, Siem. Rifatti. Rifatti. Sì. 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 Oh, see. Assalamu alaikum. Hey, we need to start. Yeah, how was